All right, aloha guys. Welcome to another episode of our high, of my High Country podcast, where we talk about Hawaii hunting issues and things related to that. Um, on this podcast, I have a special guest today. We're coming from the rainy Hilo. We've been raining for like three weeks solid. But uh, my special guest today is Tony Sylvester. How are you doing, Tozi? Oh, good, Ryan. Thank you. And thank you good. for having me. Yeah, um, still dry over here, I guess. So. Yeah, we've been hanging out pretty good up here. You know, Waikuka's got a lot of rain and you know, just kind of taking things slow right now. Good, good. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to tell the, the folks out there why uh, why I think Tony is a, is a great guest to have. Um, you know, a little while ago, uh, I wasn't working on the Big Island. I was actually on Oahu uh, prior to 2013. So I graduated college in 2006. And from about 2007 to 2013, I was in and out of Oahu working. And in that time, um, a lot of the hunting that I like to do at home, especially sheep hunting, got wiped out. A lot of fencing, a lot of eradication and things like that. And so I was away from home, coming home on the weekends, hunting a lot, and just uh, enjoying what was left of it, to be quite honest. But along the way, while I was on Oahu, I heard some stuff. You know, people on Big Island was doing something, and things were changing. And, uh, you know, Tony's name was on the forefront of all of that. So that's why I think he's an important guest here. And if you know, any of my listeners out there care about the future of public hunting on, in Hawaii, especially on the Big Island, and maybe even more so uh, of sheep hunting. Uh, this is a podcast you're definitely going to want to listen to and, and, and uh, stay tuned on. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback here and something. But uh, anyway, so Tony, uh, t- tell us a little about yourself, you know, uh, where you're from and, and what oh, you're okay. doing. Yeah, sure, Ryan. Yeah, I'm, I'm born and raised here. My ancestors came back in the 1870s, uh, migrated here, and uh, fast forward to late 60s early 1970s uh my dad started uh, uh hunting here on the big island most of it was in the national park at that time uh, oh. for goats and uh so of course you know excited young kid and see them come home and you know and so forth I c- kind of got interested in in hunting at that time i myself didn't start going hunting until probably the later 70s and then and, and early 80s for sure and mostly it was bird hunting but uh i kind of been around Mauna Kea for a long time and in the 1990s is when I actively started sheep hunting myself and there were some good herds uh, still yet up at the uh, upper slopes uh, so that's made, made for some good hunting and I guess what really got me actually involved other than just hunting is um, in around 2010 uh, they were doing the uh, Palila bird surveys and I found it kind of ironic because that t- two-week time period that they were going to be doing this survey, it was completely socked in the mountain. And I told a work friend of mine, I said, watch, they're going to come out with this pleal account and the numbers are going to be real low, so they're going to have to tur- you know, step up on eradication. And sure enough, several months later, it comes out in the newspaper and it has, oh, the pleal bird count is way down. And now they were going to start to uh, eradicate more than twice a year. And uh, oh. they're going to have to... St- get to zero count so i've been hearing these things in the background and i got really concerned about that because i guess first of all would be the fact that how did they count palila birds in thick fog and wind and so forth so i wanted to learn a little more and educate myself Mm -hmm. and uh, i guess i I started getting into uh, uh, some of the better research documents about the birds and mauna kea and the sheep uh, educated myself quite a bit on, on, on a lot of that stuff and then eventually led up to lawsuits and all, all the things that happened and the rest is history from there but after that 2010 period that that's when uh, I started getting involved because I started saying hey you know what can we do something with these animals in Mauna Kea? I mean the court order said to remove them it didn't say to eradicate them or eliminate them hmm. it says to remove the animals oh okay yeah I, I didn't I didn't read stuff verbatim. All I know yeah, is zero. Yeah. <laughs> so the word remove to me was a very powerful word. The judge, uh-huh. you know, he saw the bigger picture at the time. Uh, and, and, and I think that that word is, was a powerful. Nobody jumped on it, but we took advantage of it. Huh. And through working with uh, some of our state legislatures, uh, they helped us convince uh, some of the uh, administration in the LNR that, hey, why aren't you guys removing some of these animals and putting it in other areas for the hunters to hunt and so forth? Mm. 
and I think DLNR at that time started running out of excuses why they couldn't do do it. Sure, it was always impossible to do. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though they do that in uh, parts of New Mexico and places like that for uh, other species. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So okay, so your involvement got started just because of the stuff that happened up on Mauna Kea. Absolutely. And I would yes. say I would say even for myself, yeah. that was the same thing yeah. because I grew up hunting up there myself, uh, sheep hunting with my father, and I probably uh, I think I got my hunting license in like 97 or something like that so i'm a lot i'm yeah. a lot younger yeah. but uh um there were still animals up there to hunt um uh, there were some places there were probably uh, uh too much sheep too though yeah. you know they're very uh secluded areas that mm -hmm. people couldn't get to mm -hmm. but um yeah them getting wiped out and kind of stepping up the the aerial shoots and stuff kind of really you know put the writing on the wall that, okay they're going to actually get to zero maybe or pretty close yes and then that that drove my interest and then uh, i made one youtube video uh wild chief of Mauna Kea. it's on my youtube channel and kind of explained a little bit of that history and uh has a little bit of hunting on there and stuff but um today yeah th i would say i it, it's like hunting unicorns i I, mm -hmm. I took another hunter up there and yeah we actually saw some but it was i told him you just you just saw some unicorns out there because yeah. they're, they're they struggle even getting a, a good number from the helicopter at this point right, right? Yes. so um yeah, that was going to lead into some projects and stuff like that. But before mm -hmm. before I get into um, all of that, I kind of want to, hmm, we're, we're different in Hawaii. I tried to explain that on on, a, on the first podcast. And maybe, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, maybe it's not enough for me. I feel maybe it's not enough for me. So what I wanted was maybe kind of your opinion. Uh, would it be a fair assessment to say, that, you know, all of our game animals we hunt are non-native? uh and they do have some impacts but uh would it be a fair assessment to say like if they all disappeared they were not here anymore that our local government probably wouldn't care about that um, unfortunately yes i have uh, actually posed that question to someone uh, a while back that wouldn't it be easier if you just got rid of all the ungulates and sure. they said oh yes absolutely because then they wouldn't have to be spending time and money on fences and exactly and somewhat yeah. trying to cater to the hunters mm -hmm. so that's that's a real statement yeah so that's how we're um you know for folks not everyone that listens to our podcast or are, f are from hawaii or live here um for them to understand that yeah our animals are non-native so we have this challenge of trying to keep them uh we both know as hunters that yeah there are places we can keep them for sure right that are not like these hugely environmentally sensitive areas and things like that right uh, we would think and i think the average person does the average person, when, when you I when you when you it. especially in the, the the drier forest areas where they've been ravaged by fire and invasive species sure. and so forth yeah so but anyone that's been here and and we've worked in it long enough we've we've begun to find that even in those places that you should be able to keep some animals right it's old pasture or whatever yes can't even keep them there no, and you like can't. There's always some something something comes along, and yes. I mean, for a better word, fucks that up. I mean, that's just how it is. Yes, and uh, we're gonna talk about that today okay. for sure. Um, so I kind of, I mean, before I get into even that, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that listen too. Another thing is, how do they get involved? I get a lot of questions of, you know, well, we're losing our hunt, and all these things are disappearing. I'm seeing eradications and this and that. What am I supposed to do? Like, uh, we we have we have a commission, like you yes. were instrumental in forming that, and yeah. I want you to go into that. Okay. Um, but even that, um, you know, I'm just gonna say my point. My point of view is mm -hmm. I see a lot of people complaining on social media, yada yeah. yada yada, blah blah blah. The funny ones is like the guys who kill a, who kill a who kill a big ram in a place that there's hardly any sheep left. They say, look how rare this trophy is, right. and then there's yeah. no conservation here. But they're the very ones mm -hmm. shooting them, right? So I'm like saying, you know, social media, all they complain doesn't do anything. I'm saying maybe you need to email your representatives, email your politicians, yes. uh, talk to them, call them on the phone. And those things are what matter because these people are the decision makers. That's right. Um, I mean, what, is, what is your feeling on that? And we, we've kind of touched bases on this a few years ago when uh, when I was leaving the, as the chair of the, of the Game Commission. And at that time, I, I tried to set up uh, to the audience that we need a structure uh -huh. the hunting community where we need someone to help with uh, fundraising and uh -huh. you know uh, public relations and so forth we can't just have commissions uh, and entities like that we need those 
but we need, uh, you know, it's like an umbrella organization where we need the other aspects of it. We need the pr private people to step forward and, and help us to fundraise. We can have the funds. We can produce material. We can try to get into the schools just to let people know because right now it's none of our, our, our game resources are considered um, resources. Yeah, resources. Period. Not even a yeah. resource, right? They kind of. Exactly. I, I say they consider them as pests. Like exactly. They get treated yes. the level of like That's a rat true. and mouse, and mm -hmm. it just so happens that us us brown locals over here eat them that's and right. we actually care about that and that's <laughs> right yeah yeah so I mean, you know that that's not that message is not getting across and i think as every generation goes by we get fewer and fewer that are actually aware of the importance of our game resources okay yeah so um we, you, you mentioned briefly a little bit about commissions Let, mm -hmm. uh can you talk about that because i i know that you started or you're instrumental in trying to get the the county one started that we have on the big island that's correct and then even further on that yes um, the state one that uh, i serve now on the east hawaii side correct um, okay yeah this goes back to about uh 2012. so that was the same year uh you know, in 2010 that I, I got active so it took about two years to actually get some minutia going uh -huh. and at that point we uh, joined forces with some other organizations and that's the power of doing that where we had Pele defense fund and so forth uh -huh. and uh joining forces and resources and we were able to go to the county council at that point and push for a ban on airway eradication in Hawaii County. I see. Because the state law itself uh, didn't uh, excuse. Yeah, we had that uniform aeronautics. Yes, yes. Or whatever law that, yes, that said it nobody didn't can exempt. shoot from a No one can shoot from an area. Right. It, it didn't exempt the sure. department. So and they kind of took it on themselves for 30 years that it they were exempt from it. Sure. So we challenged that law. Uh, we went to court and we won and for a period of time they could not ever eradicate on Hawaii Island um, of course that changed a few years later but that yep. was kind of the start and then after that the uh, uh, in 2014 we had the Commission fully up and running the County Game Commission the county that was also a ballot initiative so we went out we got the vote we sign waved we I mean we, yeah. we, we put ads in the paper we, we, we you know we had a lot of good support we had all the hunters uh, you know, p pig hunters and archery sheep hunters so we, we, we had a lot going at that point and uh, there's several reasons why things kind of um, uh, got loosely untied and we can talk more about that mm -hmm. later in a, another segment yeah if you want. Sure. oh yeah, yeah i mean yeah. this is going to be i'm going to have tony on a couple more times yeah. because we're not going to solve all the world problems here yeah but it just so happened to have kind of like the superman over here like you've done it you've done you've been everywhere you, you've done a lot um before i came home yeah it was, it was a group effort yeah. i mean it did that and that's that's the thing we cannot stand alone i mean five guys six guys is not enough i yeah. mean you know you need 16 20 people mm -hmm. from all angles and at one point we were getting that because we were getting hunting clubs from kona and waimea hamakua Ka'u. so that's the forming of the county commission helped us bring people and resources from all around the island together sure so it was very, it was very good it's just as in er everything else, the issues, there is so many because you start mm -hmm. getting into watershed problems, you know, where, and that's more of our, the pig hunters and so forth like that. And everybody is trying to protect what they can. And sometimes we can't all come together on a particular issue of urgency because things happen in a queue with the department and the federal agencies. Yeah. And a lot of times we're not even aware of that until two, three years later. So we're always chasing the tail on the cat. You oh. know? And it's very hard to get up ahead of what's coming down the pipe and yeah. try to uh, be a part of that. I mean, they do have public hearings when they have these uh, meetings, if they're going to be fencing areas and eradicating and all that. But at, at most of us know that that is too late already. The decisions are made, and that's just the formality of the public process to have that hearing. Sure. We voice our concerns, and then, okay, that's checked off, and the still department moves on. Still do whatever they yes. want to do, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I think I think most locals here kind of know that. that yes. That the writing is decisions already made. We're just yeah. checking a box or talking to you. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. cool, whatever. Fuck you guys. We're going to go do this. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much how yeah. it is, right? I mean, basically, well, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> in, in a polite way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, yeah. So... Uh, we're talking about commissions mm -hmm. and uh, that's an illustration a real life example of how our public hunting is treated here 
you know, if you kind of go um, for the guys on the mainland listening, if you go to any other state, they have a fish and game commission, and they probably decide on rules and yes. and, and laws and all these kinds of things that um, it's kind of like the public's connection to the department, right? Mm, correct. Yes. Here in Hawaii, we have none of none that. of it. Yes. None of it. I mean, yeah. We can even go further. We don't even have a fishing license in Hawaii, right? We have a no, freshwater fishing license. That's correct. But yes. we don't have a saltwater fishing license yes. in Hawaii. And surrounded and by and water. And there's great resistance to it. And know? there's yeah, all kinds that's of crazy so stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it kind of, those re- those are real life examples of kind of like how Ho- Hawaii, our, island, our state, treats these resources that people hunt and fish. Yes. It's kind of treated with negligence in a sense. I mean, that's how I feel. Yes. I, I think so, and I, I think what people have to come to terms with is that the technology of harvesting uh-huh. fish and, and land, terrestrial resources, things like that, is it's, it's so much more efficient today. And, you know, maybe back 100 years ago, yeah, it would be hard to deplete the ocean or the mountains. You know, people didn't have <laughs> four-wheel drive trucks and high-powered rifles sure. or, you know, but today we have all this technology, and we have to realize that, whoa, you know, there's, there's, we have yeah. to regulate ourselves also. We can't just say because it's open, yeah, go in there and bang, bang, bang. Do whatever, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just, it's too efficient, and we're kind of self-eradicating our... Yep. our sure, our I, I totally our feel that yeah. way. Yeah. I, I totally feel like uh, certain decision makers, or a lot of them, out of the central island of Oahu, which is a whole nother topic that we have yeah. not... Capital Island that kind of makes all our laws and rules, mm-hmm. but all the resources are kind of on the outer islands. Yes. So all the outer island people live with their resources. They're screaming in a lot of places, "Hey, conserve our resources, conserve mm-hmm. our fish, conserve our game animals, mm-hmm. whatever." The Department on Oahu is just negligent. They're just not listening. They don't really care, yes. right? They're all busy. In my opinion, yeah. they're all busy cuddling up with the with the environmental NGOs. You know. The yes. Sierra Clubs, the Nature Conservancies of the world. Yeah, I, I mean, what happened? And, and that is a deep, deep concern and a deep problem is that we have government agencies that, by the definition of their job and position, sure. they can't actively lobby or, or, or um, yeah, because they're a five hundred one c three. Say they stuff. Do that, right? So they're part of these boards of these NGOs and other things, sure. and that's their pathway to. The lawsuits <laughs> and things like that. So it's like, whoa, you're you're working for the g- government agency, and you can't directly sue or, or say or do anything. Sure. But then you sit on the board of an NGO, of an NGO that can go in and do that, and then the lawsuit allows you, like the uh, Center for Biological Diversity and so forth, to come up with research and plans. And it's just one circle where you got the government feeding it's an NGO people. and the NGO feeding back to the government. and Absolutely. And meanwhile, the recreational sport and gatherer oh. is not really part of that. I'm told, yeah, I would totally concur. I've seen yeah. that over and over. Um, even at legislature, when we show up for um, uh, to provide testimony for bills and stuff, I've read the testimony of some of our department. And then I go and read the testimony of some environmental NGO. And then, you know, you look at it really good, especially one NGO in particular. I'm not going to mention their name. They probably know. Man, I swear, it's like the same guy wrote the thing. <laughs> like, you think that guy, somebody, somebody in the department wrote it for them or they mm-hmm. wrote it for the department. Yeah. And it's like, we're we're in this together kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, everybody else is kind of excluded. I mean, we're on the outer islands. We have to fly over there to go and testify. Mm-hmm. I mean, our own... Legislators don't even get to see our faces because it costs. I mean, it's cost prohibitive for yes. outer island people to, to to go there, but then they're making decisions for outer island people, and mm, we're right. we're absent. It's just a big challenge. I don't know how to get around it. It's almost like I feel like I gotta collect twenty bucks from every hunter or something to get <laughs> to get people from here to fly over there well, and, and yeah, do that. Being, at, at one point, I mean, that's what we were doing with fundraising and T-shirts and this sure. and that and all that, and try to get a pool of funds so that we could even help some of the outer island uh, people from Molokai, Kauai, yeah. and all that so they could fly down. Yeah. Because when, once you start talking about legislation now, I mean, I could have 10,000 people from Big Island go down there. It's not going to make a difference because it's a state issue. The representatives that sit on that committee or the senators that sit on that committee, if they're from Kauai, Maui, Oahu, mm-hmm. they want to know how that's going to affect or impact them. And if it's not, yeah. they don't have any interest in it. They have exactly. so many other things to, to look at and research yeah. and study so unless you can actively get people from each island 
to go down there and say, and then their representatives are going to say, oh, okay, well, I got my constituents here mm -hmm. and they're active and this is important to them. And then you can kind of move legislation through and, and get, get things going. Yeah, I mean, and that, uh, on that note, that was um, moving into, uh, you got the county commission done yes. and you got, we got a state one later. Um, yes. That was, a, uh, to me, that was an illustration of every state, every island uh, hunter mm -hmm being a contributor into into getting that legislation passed that's right? correct absolutely i mean what was it i think it was like we had like 600 something 650 something yes. pieces of support testimony correct and there was like i don't know six or seven of no te of of anti right anti yes. state game mm -hmm. commission uh, mm -hmm. testimony and we've uh, i mean i i at one of the hearings in the um uh finance uh, in the house it, i mean we 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 filled that room and they their jaws were on the on the tables because they were like oh we kind of just came in there with sure. all of our supporters and everything and they thought they were just going to speed through a bunch of bills you know and mm -hmm. and we had all our testimony in person and that really shook the tree that really woke things up i mean yeah yeah, yeah we we had the, the, the our department here uh um, nervous yeah so i mean our our legislators there they saw that that the hunters and the sportsmen of the state cared about this yes and they were they showed up and that's kind of what mattered because honestly i mean i saw i saw the beginning of it i think it was kind of like a no net loss bill at first or something yes mm -hmm. and uh you know just because we're losing all this hunting land and then it right. uh, morphed into kind of well we'll just we'll give you a commission instead yes yeah. so we started getting that and i remember the department was all in support of it it was mm -hmm. all good mm -hmm. and then as soon as we started kind of moving along in the committee like that's right like this is a reality suddenly we started getting some some pushback oh yes you know yeah suddenly um you know it gets to a committee and it doesn't even get heard like we gotta mm -hmm. really fight to get it heard mm -hmm. it's just getting stalled even though it's got so much support mm, correct you could yes. tell there was just some underpinnings in yep. there they couldn't have it they yeah. just couldn't have it, and uh, in in my uh, my opinion, the the reason why we have inevitably got it passed is uh -huh. they always talk about compromise, sure. and of course we had to compromise again. They mm -hmm. wouldn't compromise, and um, that's when they issued uh, in conjunction with the game commission bill the bill to allow them to arrow eradicate. Yeah, so they and they I really felt it was like w either they both passed or they both yeah. were going to be rejected. And at that point, with so much effort and time put in there, we figured that what's going to happen next is that they'll just come back the following year. We won't even have an opportunity to have a game commission bill, and they're going to steamroll this aerial eradication bill because they really needed to do that on Oahu, Maui, yeah. and and uh, to clean up more of uh, the Big Island, I guess. Yeah. So I mean, so we got it through. Uh, we're we're kind of up and running. Um, I mentioned yeah before. I'm the East Hawaii Island representative, and it's just. Now that I sit there, I still see the same. Um, they know exactly what we want, right? We're, we're, we're asking for, we're purely asking for a future for our game mammals and including our game birds too. Our game birds, they just don't seem to get the kind of eradication attention that our mammals do. Yes, yeah. But, you know, they know exactly what we're asking for. We want a, you know, a, a proposed plan, a future, a policy mm -hmm. for our animals instead of, we just kind of wait around till the next NGO gets some funding or something to take yeah. some more public land and, mm -hmm. and do what they want to do and just kind of throw away the rest of the public. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what that's kind of where we're at, and we're just yeah. getting stalled. stalled. I mean, yes, stalled or I would say w uh, hunters get rediverted. Re they they kind of get distracted. Well, yeah, because they throw you know, and yeah. it, it goes back to the department or whoever's feeding the department information sure. and uh, or commands i like to say sometimes i see the department it's like they're being commanded <laughs> to do <laughs> <laughs> to do things by ngos but you know you mentioned the, the bird hunting and then i i think the only reason why they don't go after the bird hunting is because bird hunting encompasses per acre uh -huh. a lot of land and it looks great on their maps because hunting is hunting, whether you're hunting exactly. a bird or a mammal. It doesn't. So yeah. I, I could literally clean out 900,000 acres of mammals, mammals and sure. still be called hunting because you hunting. can still go in there and get bird hunting. Yeah. So we, we can't get lost uh, with that one either. You got to be very careful. And uh, they've used that against us uh, several times yeah, in, in areas that is there's no mammals, there's nothing. And we're, we're talking about mammal hunting right now. Sure. Uh, yeah, that distraction is so, is so good because I... I we gotta be honest. I mean, as much as, 
as much as I feel like or yourself might feel like we're we're trying to uh, advocate for a future, I feel like even our own are very willing to eradicate everything they got as well. Right? I mean, and I yeah, and I I don't know way? if it's just that they want to do that. They just don't know what's at stake. People like just don't think. I mean, I see today just using Kepukai no Ho now, which is Hawaiian sure. Homes land, and I I'm coming down from work the other day, and two guys are in full camo with their bows and coming uh -huh. out and getting in their truck right in front of God and everyone. And I'm like, it doesn't bother anybody, I guess. It yeah, nobody cares. Yeah, nobody like cares. So, <laughs> yeah, you that's know. A, yeah, that's a topic where how, like, um, poaching is kind of a culture, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm uh, condoning it or whatever um, because I'll admit, as a as a younger man, I did some stuff that wasn't that wasn't smart. But I yeah. we all grow up, yeah. and I see the writing on the wall. We're disappearing, yeah. so we got to do things differently. Yeah, and we're trying to do that, but it's we just haven't really busted people for poaching or trespassing or whatever it is, and it's become this accepted thing. And yes. I almost feel like, I mean, I, I see like there's we got the local wardens and stuff, local officers, and they're good. I mm -hmm. like them. I mean. Uh, and everything that we're talking about, like on the local level, oh, yes. I like I like our guys here. Mm -hmm. It's just that that upper level policy makers uh, yeah. in Oahu, it, it's just not the same. I mean, they live yeah. in the city. They just kind of don't care. I don't know. Or or maybe the hell it's with hunters. Who's, right? who, it's who's pulling the strings. That's the thing. And how, how much even in the upper management, how, how, how I always pulled that question because I try to be devil's advocate. And I think I did that at your last state sure. game commission meeting where I was trying to say, well, about the game, uh, game management plan. And where are we going to go forward with that their idea of game management is what we have right now exactly in their minds yes, yes. I, I feel that the higher ups feel that that yeah. is management it's not about minds, totally. as soon as you mention about we're looking at sustainability for future yeah then you could hear a pin drop in the room because they can't see that it's just now in the moment in time this is what you have yeah why are you even worrying about it? We become conspiracy theorists as soon as I talk about what's hunting <laughs> going to be like 10 years from now. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, I'm I mean, sorry if I'd, I'd like to know th that hunting can still be with us 10 years from now. I, I feel the same way. I totally like I feel like I mean, especially starting with uh, with our wild sheep. I think that would be the first to be gone. I mean, yes. already we don't have much public area that has um, uh, huntable populations mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And then as we shrink the areas, those those possibilities become less and less that's right, right. it kind of eliminates even any opportunities mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of where we're headed yes um so i mean along those along those lines you know we, we know that the future of those things are kind of grim so you've done some things yeah. and i you know I, i'm trying to tell local people here like the bitching and complaining doesn't do anything what does yeah. something is you got to go learn, you got to go educate yourself, and you yes. got to go get involved, mm -hmm. and involved in things that make a difference. Um, and y there's a specific project I want to talk about in Pohakuloa, the military areas um, mm -hmm. at Keamoku right now. Yes. Uh, that back in uh, maybe 2013, I believe. Yes, that's correct. You guys started a um, a relocation type of project where you're getting the sheep off of Mauna Kea mm -hmm. that's court ordered to be um, eradicated mm -hmm. or removed or removed, mm -hmm. um, and you were taking those animals and putting them in a place that is probably environmentally not a real big deal. You know, right? pasture land for over a hundred years, cattle ranching and take so forth. Yeah, so Kemoku was part of Parker Ranch and uh, 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 PTA. Uh, had interest in acquiring that piece of property. So uh, apparently they went ahead and got it th uh, through the governor, I guess helped put them push it through. And then uh, they were going to use it I think, for like the striker brigade and some other stuff. I so even that. the military went ahead and, 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 and purchased that and uh, put in a few more fire roads and so forth uh, in there. And then they started running it to uh, some roadblocks as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the sensitive areas, some of the pool in there, and all were were, were fenced, and fenced yeah. right, rightfully so. You know, to try to preserve and protect the areas where the cattle weren't really getting up in there, because the rest was all fountain grass and kikuyu and so forth. Right, it's it's hundreds of years of cattle pasture. Yes, right? yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So um, we thought, well, with the nine hundred thousand acres that we have to hunt. <laughs> I, I I can pull off 250 sheep off of Monica Ice Age. Uh, where can we put them? Okay. 
uh, well, there was no state land that we could put them on. There was nowhere. So why? I mean, why? Why would? Why would you say? I mean, why would you say that? Like, okay, so they're going to eradicate them anyway. Mm -hmm. You guys d devise a plan. Like, mm -hmm. okay, well, let's let's pick them up and let's put them somewhere else then. Right. Somewhere else where I can keep them. Yeah, and it's not that, that environmentally and sensitive. Yeah. And it's know? a place that's not environmentally mm -hmm. sensitive, right? We don't have endangered species. Mm -hmm. We don't have uh, massive erosion or whatever. Uh, rotation of the earth, pick something. <laughs> Gravitational <laughs> pull. I don't know, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's the truth in Hawaii. We get crazy out here. Yeah, oh, yeah. But... um. So you guys find these this area and you do this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's massive undertaking, right? Yeah, this. I mean, it, it's like I said, it started from a political tree. You know, getting some yeah. minutia from our, our politicians to help support what we're trying to say. I mean, okay. it was reasonable, right? You guys are slated to eradicate yeah, how these did animals. You, yeah, you had to start it. Like someone, someone yeah, in oh, the community you know, had to go yeah, to somebody uh, and say, "Hey, I'll, do I'll something. give you an example." I mean, right. what when we talk about getting involved and all, it, it, it it is a lot of work. And uh, and mm -hmm. I should somewhere in this cast. Um, thank my wife Michelle because sure. without her uh, I wouldn't have been able to do a lot of what I did but we literally drove around the island chasing politicians wow. at, at their town meetings and so forth and hey try to catch them and get a few words in hey mm -hmm. you know our animals are important and this that you know uh -huh. and you know after a while uh, even uh, I remember uh, Senator Solomon I would show up in Honaka Waimea one time, even in Kona, and she told me, "Man, you don't give up, do you?" <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it does take a lot of uh, a lot of energy and and or coordination with other people to make sure we have representation when we go sure. there. But by doing that, we kind of got our names familiar with with uh, our uh, legislatures. Then we were able to come back and ask them, you know, for a hey, for some help. Hey, this is what we're trying to do. You know, we understand Mauna Kea is sensitive right now. Can we pull some of these animals off and put them somewhere else? And they would say, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Well, can you help? Can you come in, you know, through the back door of the department from the legislative side? I mean, n nothing written, nothing legislatively or anything. This is just, you know, yeah. they pick up the phone and say, hey, how come you guys can't do this? Kay. And uh, uh, Representative Onishi, uh, he, he jumped on and he, he, he made some phone calls. And then he started seeing the pushback and, you know, kind of fired him up a little bit. Like, hey, wait a minute. You know, these guys are asking sensible things. What kind of pushback did, was it, what were they seeing? Um, you know the whole thing about how sensitive Mauna Kea is and the destruction okay. and the but animals. But are you're doing taking the animals and away, and right. they're still opposing that. Exactly. So I mean, exactly, and that's where we started kind of catching them. That okay. you know, hey, we're gonna remove them. They're yeah. not gonna be there. Oh, and then they start getting into logistics. It can't be done. It's hazardous. <laughs> it's dangerous. And you know, and then uh, our representatives would come back and say, oh, they said it's dangerous and this and that. And I'd say, hey, R Richard, what's more dangerous than people shooting from helicopters? <laughs> you know? Oh, really yeah, you know, okay, right. So, you know, give them ammunition to go back and say, hey. And finally, it was uh, kind of an administrative change point mm -hmm. where the uh, 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 administrator was going to retire out. And um, I guess his last thing back to the hunters was, okay, we can go ahead and do this. And he got uh, uh, some personnel from DLR to look into what would uh, be feasible to set up a, a, a corral, a chute, and uh, and be able to drive the animals in with a helicopter, mm -hmm. and then be able to hobble and transport the animals in trailers and so forth, and release them somewhere. Sure. So. Um, yeah, it, it, it started Did happening. It and we yeah. had uh, Fish and Wildlife Service involved, mm -hmm. uh, de de uh, Department of Land and Natural Resources, um, National Park. Obviously the military too, yeah, right? PTA, of right. course. Yeah. And that was the connection that the uh, uh, resource managers locally here on Hawaii Island work worked with uh, the commander at that time who was a hunting advocate. Sure. That, hey, yeah, I got this you know, 20,000 acre parcel down here. And I said, we can't really use it for our military stuff right now because they're tangled up in yeah. lawsuits so i said yeah we could put a few animals in there there's goats you know i think at that time there was probably six to eight hundred goats oh, in tons there. Of goats, yeah. yeah so we figured well we put in a couple of hundred sheep you know that i mean how know. many sheep do you think you guys move we did i i knew the exact number but it's been quite a few years but i'm thinking it was like 239 around okay. there we wow. did three three times we we we, we caught and what we do is um it's like a soft release so we would confine them in a five-acre corral mm -hmm. for a week or two. Provide yeah. minerals, because water. There was some. There was a. There was a release before, and a mm. lot of them just went back up the hill, right? So yeah, and they weren't tagged. The first batch yeah, sure. wasn't tagged, so um, 
that's an interesting point though because now once you tag an animal now it becomes mm -hmm. a responsibility of the department okay so the first batch that we did was kind of uh, free willy but you know nobody took responsibility so it's fine so once we started tagging then it becomes the uh, responsibility of the department okay yeah so you guys you know you relocated them put them in a pen yes yep and put i I, rem pen, uh, I remember yeah kind of hearing a rumor of this mm -hmm. um i wasn't involved with with the project i was still working on oahu at the time okay. but uh rumors are kind of killing our community so that's why i'm having you explain this because oh, okay. let's get the real deal let's, let's get the yeah, real so info out so the uh the, the second release you know they went into that that corral and by then we expanded the corral to 10 acres they did a oh. wonderful job on the fountain grass i mean they ate the fountain grass down to like <laughs> one inch high sure and uh and the, the purpose of leaving them in the corral for a few weeks is to kind of get rid of their honing uh, homing mm -hmm. signals to go back up to the mountain yeah and then they would be released and um you know take their time no pressure nothing and uh, you know they kind of hung around and wasn't too bad it was the last and then the largest of the releases where we ran into problems and at that point there was a uh, there, there was a town hall meeting in kona and uh someone in the hunting community heard that they were catching these uh mouflon hybrids someone heard a rumor yes yeah right. and, and, li and like we were we were taking sheep off the mountain and, uh, sure. blah, blah, and 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 this person brought it up at this town hall meeting and the environmental groups was there and they didn't know about it and they heard about it and within two days uh, the commander at pta had his feet on the fire sure and shortly after and now these animals are in this corral now mm -hmm. right they're supposed to be released in 10 days and uh, all of a sudden, it's two weeks, three weeks, and they expanded it a little more, and they weren't releasing the last batch. And we were saying, hey, what's going on? And apparently, they called a meeting uh, in, in PTA with some of the higher-ups and the resource groups there, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service and the commander. And the environmental group was going to sue because the department didn't have an EIS to relocate animals to Kemuku, which... The, the DLNR has the ability to do that. It's mm -hmm. in the rules. Uh, that they, they have, have they have statutory yes. prerogative to do yes, that. Yes, absolutely, th they, they can. So uh, that was kind of shibai in that sense. Yeah, yeah that they s they scared. But I think what happened was they kind of scared the commander because the commanders rotate every two years or so, mm -hmm. and you know we, you you kind of threaten them. And they get a little bit panicky because they would just want peace. It's yeah. hunting is a very small part of their purpose at PTA, uh, so he kind of got cold feet. And so what do, I mean, what do you think they got? What do you think he got threatened with? So we didn't didn't do an environmental assessment or whatever it is, right? Make up whatever just to, to just to kill a project. But what do you think? Endangered uh, species? No, no. It, it was it's more personal. Yeah. We, we have to understand that, you know, even in the military and the commanding positions that these people have their careers to look after and mm -hmm. people can make it difficult for yeah. them. You know, so he's a commander of PTA, yeah. but he has to move on. He's not ready to retire yet. <laughs> he, right. <laughs> sure. So he got pressured personally to yeah. clean the things up. And the military has to keep they have to keep the Fish and Wildlife Service happy mm -hmm. right uh, typically with endangered species and yeah, they got a lot of them on, on their land yes so they kind of have a bit of a say of what you can and cannot do correct so i mean what what i guess i'm implying here is that uh, a specific person or whatever somebody important in the fish and wildlife service or something mm -hmm. probably was all cool with the project at one point yes he was suddenly uh ngo or some other people got a hold of it mm -hmm. started beating on his door and yep. then they're like oh fuck you hunters yes this, we just you can't we can't continue this anymore correct so and then what happened then yeah and then at that point which this uh very important meeting that i wasn't invited to <laughs> <laughs> figures right. yeah yeah so um i was the only person representing the hunting community and i wasn't invited to a meeting that was dealing with the animals that we were doing so it it, it, w it was more than hurtful at that time it was really deceitful in, in my in my opinion and it really left a bitter taste in my mouth but inevitably what happened was they decided to open the area up for hunting uh, a few days after they released the last herd of animals. Yeah, so you release them all, so and then they're like a new habitat. And didn't know where to go. There's there's dozens of cross fences and acres that the sheep have to take time to figure out sure. their way out to get into the larger areas where they they have fair chase. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and so forth. And they opened that thing up, and uh, it, it was it was terrible because <laughs> I went down there on opening morning with my I son, did. and we videotaped, and animals were still even just coming out of the corral and stuff, and people sure. were hunting them. I did see that. Yeah. yeah. So that that uh, I mean, and and one of the guys that I saw there sh- shoot four sheep at that time and that, that's one of the same guys that i see poaching in other places sure. all the time too okay. and yeah. stuff like nice guy i mean i talk to him i know him you know and everything like that i don't know him personally but you know he was a nice guy but just don't just i'd be like right? what, what, what are you doing oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> like there's like nothing wrong with what they're doing <laughs> yeah i mean there's nothing yeah they, they were able to they're able to haunt him i think they're only able to take one though I'm yeah not sure. that's, uh, that's what i mean but, but it was like oh i got this one. Oh wait there's a yeah. bigger one. Oh wait there's even yeah. a bigger one and it's a it's a pervasive problem in, in our community. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. our own. So, you know, I, I did see that. I don't know if it was specifically the weekend that, that they were released, but I did see at a time later where the sheep were pretty disoriented. Like, they didn't they didn't run away from people. Like, yes. I, I actually saw them in the tall fawn grass. I would walk past them at, like, 20, 30 yards, Absolutely. and they wouldn't run away. Yeah. And, of course, it was legal for me to shoot one, mm-hmm. but did I shoot one? I didn't yeah. shoot one because yeah. in the back of my mind, I knew like these guys, these guys moved right. a bunch of them. I mean, this yeah. is, this is for a future. A lot of guys mm-hmm. have to work hard to do that. Mm-hmm. But how do you feel about like now? I mean, okay. So they, w- they, they had that hunt and a bunch of guys okay. shot a yes. bunch of them. Um, and then we had a, they had a game manager get involved at mm-hmm. one point. They hired one. Correct. He kind of got, he kind of slowed that down, right? Yeah. Stopped that, them well, after I threatened to release some videos, they, yeah. they quickly shut the hunt sheep hunting and only open for goat hunting for sure. a couple of years because it was our intent yeah. in, in in when we started this whole project that there would be no hunting for sheep for a minimum of four years just so that there's no pressure on the animals they would have a chance to uh, reproduce mm-hmm. and call it that area their home okay you know and then at that point they would well, what i find is that the, the animals coming off of mauna kea uh, they don't have tall grasses mm-hmm. uh, like like that and so they they couldn't see because I, I was crawling right up to them and popping up and they would yeah, be like, like stunned like where do I attention. go yeah. the fountain grass ha- has a different aperture hmm. and they weren't used to, to that they're used to, to highland trees brush totally I yeah, totally yeah, saw so them like they just I mean, were dumb y- a quarter mile away <laughs> they're <laughs> yeah. gone but in here they just couldn't they couldn't yeah. uh, judge you or wha- what you were they so were dumb yeah. yeah and then and I mean and now now we've the military we've kind of moved on to an ice sportsman system and they have mm-hmm. these um, permits and a number uh with the permits um i haven't gotten one i haven't hunted there just because i don't know i just feel like a lot it enough uh, enough for other guys are killing them yeah. they're gonna wipe them it, out it, themselves it wasn't time because i think it was only two years and there was a resident herd that established that themselves yeah they, they were only i think maximum was about 60. Mm. And that's not sustainable. I mean, and let's like say, like, uh, let's rewind it back. Mm-hmm. There was even sheep. There was sheep there before they started uh, allowing hunting in Kiamoku. So there was a point in time they were actually yeah. building the. They were decimated the when they made the Saddle Road. Yeah, so they were building the Daniel K. Inouye Highway, yeah. and as these guys were building the highway, you know, the contractors or whoever it was, people were seeing these big rams. I mm-hmm. mean, they're big. Oh I, yeah. I seen them when I was a kid hunting Pukeke around Area 16 when we had military hunts. Mm-hmm. And you see them in there. They're big. Yeah. I mean, these are, I don't know, for lack of a better term, SCI type trophy animals. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest, there are some of those that ended up in the SCI books poached. Mm, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to mention any names, but they know who they are. Like mm-hmm. some of th- these things got poached and they got put in an SCI trophy book, which mm-hmm. I'm not with all that stuff. Yeah. But it's it's ridiculous i mean and they opened some hunting in there when the military acquired it and uh started mm-hmm. allowing people in there and they hunters went bonkers in there yep. they just drove through it shot all they could yeah. and and there were pretty much no sheep left there was yeah. hardly anything so hardly anything they wiped them all and then everyone was pretty much just hunting goats for a long right. time that's yeah. all you went there for you knew yeah. you was going goat hunting and then you guys moved all the sheep there now you kind of have you had a resident herd. You started mm-hmm. going, and they grew big, dude. Oh like yeah, I'm talking like These some nice. of some of the ones the guys are shooting now. They're big and they're young. St- mm-hmm. <laughs> like they grow big pretty quick just because mm-hmm. of the right uh, habitat. Yeah, and hey man, it's like every weekend. Like mm-hmm. anytime the chance they get, let's go in there and let's kill them. Let's mm-hmm. kill them. Let's kill them. Mm-hmm. Let's kill them. And they don't even. I don't even think they realize that a lot of a lot of other people worked hard 
to get yeah. those animals there. It's a finite resource. It's not infinite. Yeah. You know, they don't think that there's there's no other areas supplying this area with animals. That's it, right? You yeah. know, and people don't. I don't know if they comprehend that or they just don't I mean care. But there's there's. Well and I think <sighs> I think an outside listener is probably wondering, well, how come the guys in charge don't limit the 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 take? How come they don't limit the take more then? If this is if this might be a a, a trend that takes you to uh, a, a unsustainable kind of unhuntable number. I mean, why? How come? What do you say to that? How come? How come someone up ahead doesn't limit that now? I mean, we did. We had a guy limiting them actually, I right? Mean, if and then I- if the objective is to remove all ungulates, why not let us do it, right? Yeah. So I mean, that's and that is a pretty classic example yeah. right there of of our problem where we can find a place that's not even environmentally sensitive. Mm-hmm. People get even all on board, mm-hmm. and then suddenly. Once it seems like it's going somewhere, yep. The hell with it. Any right? chance of success is sh- surely crushed. That's for sure. <laughs> surely <laughs> crushed. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're not allowed as hunters to organize. We're not allowed right, to get yes. behind anything. And then even worse, I mean, I think the knife, the knife that cuts the deepest, is our own. Is our own that they don't give a fu- they don't give a crap, man. They're just gonna go in there. I'm gonna get mm-hmm. what I can get yeah. before the other guy gets it, yeah. or before somebody else eradicates it. And I've I've heard that where oh, it's f- they're gonna they're gonna eradicate them anyway. So you what know, you worried but about? But I mean, they're not gonna eradicate this area. You know, we have to have some area, you yeah. know, a sanctuary for our animals to at least repopulate and feed other areas. And people don't see that. They don't see that. At all. And even when you close an area, and people go and sneak in and so forth, and they don't realize how important it is to totally uh, to the species when you go in and sneaking in and taking something out of season or whatever yeah it's totally just disrupts I, the system yeah i bless like there are a few in, you know there are a few guys who were the game manager at one point he was actually limiting it watching it taking mm-hmm. care of it and they had a they had their own warden over there mm-hmm. he was taking care of it he's doing a good job of course yeah a few got poached here and there yeah. everyone sees them on the instagram or on the facebook or whatever no one says nothing though those things get yeah. get 500 likes or whatever but you got a sheep project no one even knows about, you know. Yeah. It's kind of it's yeah. kind of just this unfair, sick cycle to me. Yeah. That like I, it's one thing that it's one thing that I ha- we got to battle with people that don't like hunters or don't like sheep or don't like any of these ungulates that eat plants whatsoever mm-hmm. on these on these islands. But it's another thing when the very people that you're trying to help are the very ones squashing you down too. Yeah, and that inevitably what ended my. <laughs> participation yeah you know it's it, it it got to the point where the people when when y- you would try to hold uh, fellow hunters accountable and they would come back with well we don't need your help yeah you know and it's like okay mm well who are you working for <laughs> yeah so like i guess yeah I, if i got a message for like the local hunters that are listening here it's like you know we got to fix that. Like, we're not going to go anywhere. I mean, it's it, like I said, th- there's there's highly influential decision makers that are always going to stomp on us. Yeah. But if we're getting stabbed in the back the whole way by our own, too, we're not going to go nowhere. I mean, this is this is this is crazy. As soon as something gets good, mm-hmm. I'm going to have a hundred, two, three, four hundred guys ready to go and wipe it out of our mm-hmm. own. It's yeah, like you got a long line for uh, for the end result. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's yeah. But to get to get to that point and, you know, it's. That that was a constant battle. When I started this, though, I always said, always w- people, everyone has something to offer. Sure. You know, so w- I try to go with that, and you know, it it it, it worked pretty successfully. You know, because not everybody can talk, or not mm-hmm. everybody's got money. So you know, you try to find the people that got the money, but maybe they have successful businesses, and but they can't be a face can't be a face yeah. so yeah. you know f- maybe financially they can help you know and so forth and you got other people that can hey just show up to the meetings they got more free time or mm-hmm. so there's always a way to you know sometimes we just need bodies in a room uh, yeah, we don't need people to say anything just you know? people to vote sometimes. yeah sometimes yeah. we need people to vote you know or, yeah. or a call make a phone call you yeah. know you don't have to have a computer you don't have to get sophisticated and all that but the energy that it takes to keep these people motivated you know, and when I say these people, I mean our hunting community and our gatherers and stuff. It's it's very hard. It, it, it they get know? deflated every time we fail and fail, right? Yeah, I mean yeah. Or or even when it's success, it's I've I've had things where oh we're making backdoor deals or stuff like that, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you know, and these guys that I I know for years and stuff like that, and all of a sudden we're making backdoor deals at the legislature f- to 
you know, like, like I got a 10,000 acre ranch or something and I'm, uh, you know, yeah, dumping I'm, animals I'm off in my, my I'm ranch I'm taking the or animals something. somewhere, right? Yeah. Or it's you know, so ridiculous. It, yeah. So, but I mean, uh, maybe though, maybe sometimes there, there, there's truth to some people's rumors though, right? I mean, yeah, there, there are well, examples, though. Where well, I think Hawaiian Homes Land was an example that people were, were saying that. And I, I know yeah. there's some recent information that came out about that. You know, and, uh, Early on in the p development of the project, I was part of that. Sure. And I was there as mainly for uh, humane reasons to make sure that the process that they so were going to do to capture the animals would be yeah. humane and not animals getting their eyes poked <laughs> out. Or <laughs> so, so, before, uh, yeah, so before we go into that, yeah. let, let's explain that then. So... We, ah, boy, because that's a that's a big topic, right? Mm -hmm. We we go to the legislature, we go to Wahoo, me and you, or God God knows mm -hmm. who anybody, and we sit there, and we're like, hey, our our hunting areas are getting cut down, they're getting fenced up, they're getting mm -hmm. eradicated. There's no policy to keep them, blah blah blah. An environmentalist shows up at the legislature, tells them, look at this photo of a thousand sheep on the side of Saddle mm -hmm. Road, thousands of them, and it's true. Yes. Th there's a thousand in that herd oh, at yeah. one point. There's a thousand. What are the hunters complaining about? What, there's yeah. a thousand oh, of yeah. blah, blah, I, blah. That was part <laughs> of the problem. And, you know, we go to the county fair and we have a booth and we talk about animals and I'd have people, what are you talking about? We have plenty of sheep on the mountain. I, <laughs> I drove by yesterday. And, and then I'd be like, well, that's Hawaiian homes land. That's there's no hunting policy true. there. We don't have any jurisdiction there. Sure. Uh, you know, and that's a whole separate problem. Right but, there. I mean, I but the key to that was that uh, when... Uh, William Isla was the chair of the LNR. He got into uh, a, a, a heated discussion with uh, Mike Robinson, who was running that project for uh, the Aina Mauna Legacy project there. And um, he said that the animals belong to Hawaiian Homes Land. And William Isla said, no, animals are a resource of the state. It belongs to the people of the state. Uh -huh. It just so happens to be they crossed over into the part of Hawaiian Homes Land. So yeah, I mean, so theoretically, yeah. by law, the animals actually belong to the people of we the state. We can rewind it. Yeah, we can rewind it back even further. You've hunted here a long time. I've hunted here a long time. I got scientists or these expert PhD people, right? They go to school somewhere, wherever, learn about animals, and they say, "Man, there's all this devastation. There's this. Look at the pasture over there. Like, there's just thousands of sheep running around there. Blah blah blah." Now. 20 years ago, maybe even, fi I don't know, maybe even 15 years ago, that wasn't even there, right? No, yeah, there were no sheep. That, that, fin that was, uh, and it was right after 9-11, um, uh, is that 2001? 2001, 2001, yeah. Over there, because I remember the yeah. signs came up, government property, and I was like, oh, later, yeah. it was the government taking over all this land from PTA. I didn't know at that time that uh -huh. was Hawaiian Homes land. So for a, a number yep. of years, um, the, the, the signs were there, but nobody did anything with that. And yeah. there was n there were n literally no sheep in there. Yeah, there were no sheep because it was yeah. it was ranched. Yeah, the ranch the ranchers would shoot them on the site, and the ranchers would shoot them. Yeah. And I used to hunt in area one through four, the military mm -hmm. area that's adjacent to it. And when we'd spook sheep, they would never even run into their pasture. Yeah. They would run across the lava flow, right. which is now fenced. Fenced. That's right. So what had happened was all these fences started coming up everywhere, mm -hmm. and the sheep had nowhere else to go. Yeah. And they're ending up there. Yeah. And then the uh, Parker Ranch got kicked out as a as a cattle uh, rancher right. there, because I guess you know some people were upset that leases were going to people that are not Hawaiian, mm -hmm. so leases mm -hmm. got taken away. Right, one of so. which was maybe that one. Yes. So no cattle, no nothing, no honey, and this population was able to grow, grow, grow in this small sure. area. It's a sanctuary. It's a sanctuary. Yeah. So yeah. They, they moved in there. So yeah. So here I am. You know, we got to show up legislature, or whatever. Some PhD that says he knows everything about everything mm -hmm. says that look at all these animals over there. And then here's a bunch of local people that's lived here their whole life saying, dude, that wasn't a that wasn't a problem before. Right. Like that was something you could almost say that the fences caused. That's right. They made it. They, they made, made it that yeah. problem. And it's not that's not the hunter's fault. That's mm -hmm. not. I mean, and we mm -hmm. can't hunt there. They have a mm -hmm. no hunting policy. Mm -hmm. So you guys, you know, um, at some point tried to get something. That we, I mean, we tried to get. Well, hunting. that was my involvement in it. Yeah. Originally, I I stepped in to see if they needed help and w I went to uh, Kyoka Association there yeah, yeah. and you know I went to several of the meetings and I met with some of the higher ups and leaders there and and I tried to say that hey you know what we can help change the law because that's not right that's your guys land and you guys there's a no hunting policy Do something with it yeah. so what needs to be changed and there was resistance by the uh, land manager 
at that time. And mm -hmm. I said, hey, I'm going to the legislature. I have our own bills. I, uh, we can introduce this. It's a quick change to the language that can get uh, hunting or gathering, even if you want to call sure. it, uh, on your guys' land because there's beneficiaries and people that will, would like to hunt there. And, oh, no, we'll, 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 we're working on something else. Sure. And th Nothing that never never happened. And then, the, like you said, the population's increased to over a thousand. And then there was becoming a hazard crossing the highway, and they were concerned with cars getting hit and responsibility and all that. So, inevitably, they had to figure out how to keep the numbers in check. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when they came up with this project to make a corral s similar to like what we did up on Mauna Kea, and. Um, and try to drive some of the animals in there and then disperse some of the animals, try to keep some for good genes, you know, yeah. release some back and, you know, take the pulled ones out and reduce some mm -hmm. of the females and so forth like that. Uh, the first time we went, we didn't have a helicopter and I think we caught all but two ewes <laughs> <laughs> and several, you know, there's six, seven uh, babies that we couldn't, you know, yeah. the herd travels far and babies were left behind. And, and that was kind of like my part with that. I want to make sure that anything like that would be taken care of mm -hmm. and stuff like that, not just leave abandoned lambs and stuff. Uh, the second time uh, we tried, we had a little bit more success. I think we had like 20 animals or, or, or yeah, I think about 20, 24 animals. And then after that, I didn't go because I there was there's several reasons, but one of them was I didn't like the way some people were treating the animals, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be a part of it at that point already. So I, after that, I'm not sure what happened, but I know at one time they were uh, using the helicopter and getting like 70 animals at a time or so. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of animals to manage, and people didn't realize that, okay, now we're – or they were successfully capturing them. You know how many hours and coolers and ice and – to be skin skinning and deboning Absolutely. and to provide. So I think at that point they decided to, if uh, people that helped and beneficiaries, they wanted uh, live animals that they could take, but they'd have to be over uh, uh, a, a certain age. Mm. You could tell by the teeth. Uh, be, otherwise you can't transport them because if you're of, uh, there's some sheep diseases, which actually we don't have here in Hawaii. Mm. But the uh, scab scabies. People were just called? saying whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a, a an age limit or whatever it was. Uh, so some people were taking some a animals alive, and some were being processed for the meat and given to. No, people. I'm sure. Like, I'm sure someone's listening out there going, "What the heck? Like, why could you just haunt them? Why we gotta go there and make this big rigmarole catch them alive?" Oh, absolutely. That was my thing. But, but you can't. It and was just this huge opposition to yes. allowing. Hunting, hunting period correct. yeah i mean and it and it continues on and on i yeah. mean i saw they, we try to say yeah. okay we'll even gathering people were like well I, i'm gonna gather I, if i'm hawaiian i can go, sure. yeah, go and gather and all that kind of stuff and it was like fine but then they were still limited to the beneficiaries which you have to have a blood quantum and you know so it's there's uh, a talk of that yeah yeah I mean, I, I, we never got that clear clarified there can, was can um, i be a 10 percent hawaiian 15 percent so and be able to go gather yeah, so over there or i remember I, I remember a specific meeting where a land manager for them said dlnr told them no and that was mm -hmm. completely false yeah that's because right because i went and i got the real story of that mm -hmm. and the real story was they went and asked the dlnr officials here oh can you um you know can you guys run a hunting program in there mm -hmm. and the dlnr people told them all we can run a hunting program but we can't do it specifically only for Hawaiians right. or only for beneficiaries. It has to be public because yeah. that is how they're governed. Right. But they told them, well, if you guys want to do one of your own for your own people, mm -hmm. hey, we got no problems with that. You guys go right ahead. So yep. they got to go ahead. Mm -hmm. But I remember sitting in a sitting in a, in a meeting with the guy on and saying, no, DLNR told them, no, we can't. Yeah. And that was a straight out lie. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a problem in our, that's a problem in our community. Like mm -hmm. you have certain faces lie one but then you also have people kind of just living on rumor they don't go and find out for themselves mm -hmm. and it's yeah. a big i mean it's a big deal yeah. it stems even further than that like the whole i know mauna plan for yes, that whole area exactly it specifically says yeah i can go verbatim all unmanaged ungulates will be eradicated this is not a game management program mm -hmm. this is eradication or something like that yep I mean, if yeah, well, we, we I try to bring it to the attention of some people, and they don't read. They didn't read, or they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> now, today, I've, I've I've met with some of the uh, protectors up there uh, recently, and you know, some of the guys I talked to, yeah. Akamai guys, and they read 
They read it? They read the plan. They're like, oh, yeah, bro, I I read the plan. What kind of too late? You know what I mean? So, (laughs) yeah, yeah, it's like, well, I I think they can can do some good things up there. They can keep track of, you know, the poaching was getting out of control. I mean, guys were just in there and it was getting to be uh, beyond archery. Guns fire! I, I drive by and boom, 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 boom. I'm like, okay, there's yeah. a highway right below, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that, that's a reality. The wild West in there. That's a reality in Hawaii. Yeah. It is kind of like the Wild West with, especially with yeah. our public resources. Like yeah. the private, I mean, even private land guys get poached out too, yeah. though. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's just sickening. But um, yeah, what I was getting to there was, I mean, for for that community, you know, the Hawaiian homes community and stuff that are some of them might be upset about their animals being removed or eradicated. Mm-hmm. Hey, I mean, someone wrote it in a big environmental assessment plan. You guys had a chance to read it and yeah. your leaders voted on it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and you guys are absent. I mean, but I'll be honest, you know, I saw, I was at the meeting when the, the Dofa tried to get the Kipuka and a whole lease. They mm-hmm. tried to put that mm-hmm. forth so that people could continue to hunt. I saw, I mean, it's 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 up on the it's up on YouTube. Big Island Video News mm-hmm. folks uh, recorded it, and there are people just, you know, local people too. I don't hunt. I don't care. No lease. Yeah. You know they don't care. Yeah. Like they didn't care about anything else, and I don't blame them. Like yeah, their department got issues. They're not. You know mm-hmm. maybe they're not f- fulfilling their fiduciary responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe. Yeah. So I I can totally relate to the frustration. Maybe. But, man, without hunting in there legal hunting in there yes which is what we used to have what do we have now and I, i'm gonna say it i mean blatantly when you don't support legal hunting you support support illegal hunting <laughs> yes so now. right now what we have is just a ton of poaching now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean uh, and some people are honest guys they're just going and getting what they're getting their meat and going home sure yes but then there's some other ones that are just kind of like you know they can go in their gun shoot whatever some mm-hmm. of them might be even felons shouldn't even own a gun yeah um, and I'm just waiting for an incident, you know. I mean, it yeah. something's gonna happen at some point. Got crazy people, yeah. But it's yeah. sad. I mean, we're just kind of yeah. explaining those situations. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and you know, what, not being, not having, hu- I could not understand how they would not have hunting as part of the Ainamaro Legacy Plan. I mean, that that is was so beyond me when I read that to yeah. think that wow, you know, they they wrote that and they approved that, not even thinking of a food resource for their people, but. But there was like all these things. Oh, we'll make permits for bird watching. We'll make permits for tr- oh tree yes. planting. We'll do all this other stuff. I see environmental uh, ecotourism groups using ecotourism, utilizing, right? sure, utilizing the old sheep station. Even how they got keys to go in there. I wanted to go in there and photograph the old buildings because uh-huh. I do some photography with old buildings yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I wanted to make a story about the sheep station. I had to jump through hoops. I had to go get one permits i mean i, I couldn't inevitably i gave up <laughs> and i only asked the guy is hey can i just come in there for half an hour i wanted to get some pictures of some uh-huh. of the old uh, old structures and things in there and i couldn't even do that but this guy that owns an echo tour company he's got keys gets in there takes people oh. uses the bathrooms or whatever in there uh, they use the trails all the hiking and yeah. bird watching so that was one thing yeah like i just i'm i'm, I'm so it's so upsetting that I've kind of felt like a, as a public land hunter that used to go there, that was where I started bow hunting was in there. Actually, my first bow hunts were all in there when I was a little kid. But um, I felt like I kind of got shit on by like local people. They mm. said, you know what? Fuck, honey. I don't care about you guys. Yeah. But while on the other side, I'm looking, I'm looking at a bunch of tour guides and people that don't even live here running tours in there. They're making money on that. Mm-hmm. And you guys, you know, I'll be honest, like, you're kind of bashing on local hunters, but then here's a bunch of outsiders making money in your yeah. place. I asked Uncle Louie that, and he didn't even know. I said, what, I what like percentage are you guys getting from <laughs> the yeah. money that, you know, $150, $200 a head to go echo yeah. tour people going through there? What percentage is going back to Department of Hawaiian Homes land? I think they just don't know, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, like, it, I think it's, um, I mean, I think it's just, it's just pure ignorance, I guess. Like, they just don't know that those things are happening. and. Yeah. Part of this, uh, part of my aim with this podcast was get those people that are out there, yourself, um, I'll find some others, and just get those real stories going mm. so that local people know. And, you know, even for the guys from the mainland want to come on public lands here and stuff like that, I mean, they kind of get a sense of what's going on mm-hmm. too. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, probably get 
some panties in a bunch everyone getting upset at me for some of the stuff i just said but hey you can go fact check it i mean yeah, you well can probably uh, fact check anything the thing. We said, i mean right? we cannot you know as as far as hunters you know I, sometimes that that was the issue is I've never seen people so sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> you like know, we're, it's like we're hunters. We're hunters, man. I you mean, should be able gosh. to handle a little bit of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you got to be politically correct. You got to this, that, and then life's not that way, man. Sometimes it's raw. It's raw. Sometimes you gotta get people's attention, you know, and get people motivated to do stuff, and, you know. And uh, sometimes I was that way, but I, I'm not trying to be arrogant or or insulting or anything but it's like hey we gotta pay attention and it takes effort exactly you know yeah people just aren't paying attention right yeah. i mean they, they can spend they can spend every waking moment living for the weekend to go hunting but yeah. to even think about oh are you even going to be hunting here five years two years from now yeah. oh i don't even know about that i don't care yeah i mean honestly they don't i mean we can people can post whatever it's just great lifestyle blah 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 all this stuff yeah. quite honestly we're all willing to work for it. Yeah. Right? You just want to uh, show up to kill. But you have to. Everything. I mean, I don't yeah. care what we do. <laughs> you, you have to. I mean, look how hard the environmental community works for what uh, they see is important exactly. in, in their eyes. So exactly. I mean, they're willing to volunteer, at, uh, you know, tree planting, weeding, whatever. You know, I mean, they're there. They're w they're willing to, to do that, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's I feel like we're always disadvantaged. Like, we kind of, um, they can get behind a, 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 a cause that is collectively theirs it's not for them kind of even even non-consumptive mm -hmm. in a sense yes, true. but our cause is somewhat consumptive in a sense right we're going to take an animal we're going to take something off mm -hmm. the land yeah. but then it's also like the the collective part of it would be well we're trying to make it so everyone can do that right yes right so everyone can take not just me yeah but, but that, that part doesn't get but the old way translated. was <laughs> that way you you catch you catch fish if you if you net fish you yeah. you release back some you make sure you always get you know you right. always release some i mean yeah. if everybody if just did that if, if i caught 60 okuli and i and i released 20 back sure. always going to get fish but then somewhere along the line people just said well i'm going to catch them because and i'm going to take them all because if i don't somebody else will and that's the mentality. I was a fisherman way uh -huh. before I hunted, and uh, you know, my my father was a fisherman. He even got he got swept out to sea. My father died fishing, so fishing was very close to us, and we did a lot. But I saw it back in the uh, mid '80s where, where things really changed in the f fishing realm, and you know we see the same thing today now with hunting. That well, if I don't shoot it, somebody else will. Yeah, and that's what and that's what we're that's what we're crying uh, as yeah. hunters and fishermen. We're crying that our own are hurting ourselves, but this happens because we don't put our department our government doesn't put a p a a system in play that yes. every other state in this mm -hmm. country seems to have but us is like totally absent yeah. and then when we try to do it it gets like muddled up with somebody else's interest with environmental yes. this or whatever right. I yeah. mean, it gets muddled yeah. up and then it never happens it just gridlocks so yeah I mean, you just need or fake attempts like, OK, we'll right. game, we'll game management, the temporary work on a game management plan yeah. and then with color photos. And then and I'm like, we don't need color photos in this. We, we you know, we want to know what sustainability is going to be like. What how, how is this going to yeah. reach out to the future? Because inevitably, game management is eradication. Here it is now. Yes, I feel that way. That's that, that's all it is. It's, it's a means to an end. How they go about doing it without you yeah. know, attracting too much attention. Yeah, I yeah. feel like, yeah, if you were to say, oh, let, let's save a few uh, sheep here so that I can hunt them for five years or whatever. Mm. I think if you do that, no, absolutely not. But yes. if someone were to say, oh, let us go hunt. No, I let go. Mm. Oh, yeah, shoot. Yeah, I, go. I could make a game management plan tomorrow that the Fish and Wildlife Service and the state would be on. It's yeah. hunt every day, no right. bag limits, yeah. do whatever yeah, you like. The famous no bag limits, right? Yeah, it would be like <laughs> we'd... We'd be done. Like, we'd have a plan. At least we have something on paper. Mm. It'd be eradication on paper, but it's yeah. something. Yeah. But I feel like that. They'd mm. be on board with that. But everything, anything else, mm -hmm. even remotely close to... Even a watering a unit. I argued that no. so many times. You know, well, why can't we give the animal water? Oh, well, that's enhancing the animal. or it's sure. but So you'd rather the animal strip bark off a tree or, or whatever, right? Instead of trying to get moisture or whatever. Yeah, and it, it's total like it's total fed rule. It's you know the, yeah, yeah. the Endangered Species Act, Section Seven. Every time we use fed dollars, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. all this stuff. Mm -hmm. We can explain that in a whole nother podcast. I mean, I think we need to do an education podcast too. Maybe yeah. one with like 
where does your hundred dollars go when you buy a hunting license where does it end up yeah i would actually and what we've been paying for a hunter license is yeah. not enough to do anything yeah actually if our department will release somebody to come and talk to me on this so to kind of just yeah. let's just run through this and get that yeah. all cleared i think that'll be awesome yeah. i don't know though but it's hard to justify more yeah. money for hunting license and hunting when i don't have the confidence of you do? something five ten years from now <laughs> yeah. same it's thing back, with the fishing it's, it's back to that again if if i yeah. know that the department or the system accepted our animals uh, realized that they have value and carry that on into the future then we can say hey you know what we can convince hunters to pay hey you know if we got to pay a hundred bucks a year and then the money is going to this and people see results yeah. and see their money going to good use right now hard to justify more money when the, the outcome is eradicate or you can't put animals here or I pay more for less yes <laughs> yeah. yeah in a nutshell exactly or I, yeah. i'm more actually paying to wipe myself out in yeah. Some yeah 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 totally is there any I mean, anything else you, you want to share because yeah we're um uh, well, I, I I had one question here that I actually, when you asked me, what do I feel yeah. about things today? And it this is just a, a statement, and I'm going to read it off of, off a of paper, so if it sounds a little mechanical, but Go ahead. It, it's something to think about. It's uh, I always call it a self fulfilling prophecy. It's <laughs> behavior is determined in part by their perception. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of what it is is has to do with that word perception. It's how people perceive things. It's not what's real. It's not what there or what's mm -hmm. happening. It's how people perceive that. And that can help us and that can hurt us. And I think right now the perception is it really hurts us. Mm. And we need to change that. Oh, wow. So what uh, what perception are you talking about? In specifically? Um, I, I think in the sense as a, as, a, as a hunter that all I am looking for is something to kill. Totally. Um, or... or or I don't understand, as a hunter, I don't understand that these animals are causing harm to the environment. And why am I fighting to keep them <laughs> alive? Sure. You know, I, I get people honestly tell me, like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? You know, and totally. then I start thinking, man, it starts making me feel, I feel bad myself. Like, oh, wow. I mean, and then I tell myself, well, wait a minute. The animals are here. Once they're gone, th that's it. They're gone, yeah. They're gone. Well, I, I can't I mean, you can't bring any yeah. more animals here. That's the other thing. I mean, it'd be it'd be one thing if like you, you wiped them out and it you did something with all of that land that was like somewhat socially better, I yeah. guess. Yeah. But there are examples or there are even lands right now where you could do whatever you want. Get rid of the animals, it's still gonna be the same thing, maybe even worse yeah. if you did. Um and it's like I don't know, it, like you said, the perception, I think kind of the environment NGOs they they got the ear of like everybody that doesn't hunt or fish right everybody mm -hmm. on the on the on the main island the outer mm -hmm. island people get it mm -hmm. probably but the yeah. the Wahoo urbanites yeah I'm just gonna say it straight they just don't get it like they just well who's the experts oh these guys these guys have never even been there yes live there a few years tell them all about this plants or whatever oh, you it remember is. the watershed the rain follows the forest and how they figured well they can't eradicate they'll get the funds and money to eradicate the animals sure so they went about it with water and i had a legislator totally. tell me this well if you talk to 95 percent of the population is going <laughs> to say we need <laughs> clean drinking water of course, of course. we do Everyone but agrees. now how does that translate to having to eradicate animals from a particular area because of uh the recharge rates are changing or because yeah. they're eating all the natives and and you know like you said you, you dig into it and you start reading the water models that the u.s geological survey produced and it's it's 180 out from what the state model and what they ran with and how much information that they left out and they cherry pick particular things out of there. When sure. you find, in fact, a lot of these areas that they, uh, Pumakala and other areas, they couldn't just fence and eradicate the pig, for example, uh, based on um, native species, but they could do it based on protecting the watershed. The watershed so sure. it became a, a, a tool. Now today it's climate change. Oh, because of climate change, now we got to eradicate the animals because <laughs> <they're>, yeah. <laughs> so you know I, I say they're, it all they're time. quick. They're quick to jump on yeah. these things and take advantage of that, yeah. and it gets the the common people out there. Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's the thing, yeah, and uh, they just don't know, right? Yeah. I think they just take whatever. It's just it, it's even like you could just say you could say the gun, the anti-gun stuff. Yeah. You could say the same thing. Yeah. They've never held one. They never touched one in their life. Yeah, don't even know what one is. Probably don't even know which end the bullet comes out of. Probably, yeah. but hey. 
the TV or media or mm-hmm. whoever controls that kind of yes. makes them experts. Perception and, 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 again. And they vote on that perception. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They they make decisions based on that perception. Yeah. And, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully getting our voice out there as hunters. Uh, yes. It's like a competing voice, hopefully. And hopefully, you know, hey, fact check it. Fact check my stuff. Yes. Oh, fact absolutely. check Tony's stuff. Yes. I don't care. No, absolutely. I mean, we do our homework, mm-hmm. you know. And, and that's one thing, too. Like, as hunters, you know, as a community, we got to do our homework. Like, I, I see guys show up at, at community meetings. And they just want to scream. Mm-hmm. They want to scream. Yes. They yeah. want to swear. They want to get mad and this and that. And, you know, quite honestly, all it does is, like, some of our group, some other guys, they take video of that. They go back. They show their folks. And, like, these are the kinds of people you're dealing with. Dealing with, right. Like, irrational. They just, they'll just tune you out. And they tune yeah. us out, yeah. Yeah. So we, we never go anywhere. So it's like, I mean, it's a it's a game of politics. I yeah. mean, uh, no matter no And matter I understand what the emotions because yeah. people are, you know, when you're closing areas and you're eradicating people's uh, food resource, you know, it, it, it is very, it becomes this emotional, you know, yeah. also. But I agree. There, there has to be. And I, you know, I blame myself at times too that, you know, uh, my ability to try to lead and, you know, if, if, if I didn't come on the proper way and stuff too. So, you know, uh, there may be other people out there that have better skill <laughs> to, 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 to do, do that or whatever. So I hope it, if they're it, listening, they jump in because I, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm out of ideas. Yeah, yeah. I'm down to. I'm well, down I, to the thing is, it's <laughs> hard for me because I know what we need to do, but it, it's like trying to form an army, right? You, you, you have to have a structure and you have totally. to have. Uh, you have to have people. You have to have not followers, but you have to have, yeah, uh, you know, personnel. Yeah, and they have to not shoot at each other too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, and yeah. I always said that. Hey, you know, I got a few key people. I I, I need you know I need uh-huh. volunteers. And, and you know, for the most part, I I I did get help when, when I needed. It's just that as you get deeper into things, and then it it requires more effort and work, and where we have to start being playing politics too. I agree. You know, I can't just go in there and, damn it, you know, yep. we need this. Okay, well, that day is over. We did that day one, day, day 10, one, yeah. day 100. Now we're on day 1,000, and now we have to be, hey, what can we do? How can we get this? How yeah. You know, and that's just the way the system is, <laughs> right? You're going to yeah. play chess? You got to play chess, right? I'm not going to yeah. show up and play checkers when we're playing chess. You're so going to lose. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to lose. So <laughs> Totally, I agree. So, um. Yeah, with that, we're, we're at a little over an hour here. I think it's been uh, okay. pretty good. Uh, you, Anything else to add? To uh, uh, just keep the faith, guys. I mean, and, the and, 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 and please, please listen. Listen to Ryan. And, you know, if you guys got thoughts <laughs> and you. ideas, you know, too, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, you know, con- contact him or myself or uh, whatever. If we, we can help with anything sp- specific, yeah. I think we'd be glad to try to help out. And if people have other ideas or know of things that are going on and, and, and I stuff I, yeah. i've kind of i'm kind of out of it uh, a little bit right now but i mean uh, if somebody needs something in particular then I'd, I'd be glad to help sure and i i'd, I'd echo the same thing i know there are um, folks similar to us uh, similar to us on each island mm-hmm. and uh, I, I definitely i want to get their stories i want to get that out because um i see it i see like where rumor where the information doesn't come from the horse's mouth mm-hmm. rumor starts filling the filling the space and then it oh, sometimes yeah. is uh, self-defeating. It mm-hmm. it kills the community. So yes. I definitely want to get the the real deal out. Yeah. Tony, you're the real deal. Uh, well, thank, you, thank you, Ryan. Thank I want to thank time. you very much for your time. <laughs> All right. Anytime, man. It's been awesome. Thank you. Aloha, right. everyone. Aloha. <laughs> thank you.